over 35,000 registered vehicles on the streets in Dominica and we have only 25,000 households. It means therefore in certain households you have two and more vehicles. Is that poverty? And, and that's very serious. So my dear friends, the choice is clear. You must make it your duty. And you in Guadeloupe, once your name appears on the voters list, take a plane, take a boat, and come down to Dominica and vote for the Dominica Labour Party. Labour? Labour! Now, before Labour, my dear friends, it's important back in education, only 307 Dominicans had associate degrees, my dear friends. Now with labor, at the state college alone, we have 6,500 Dominicans with associate degrees, my dear friends. How can you not vote for the Dominica Labor Party? And I can say to you, when we are elected in the next term, we shall ensure that every household in Dominica has someone with a degree. And only Labour can do that for you. We are voting for Roosevelt Scarrett as the Prime Minister and the Dominican Labour Party as the next government. Labour? Labour! You know something? You know something? We were in St. Martin last night. And I've been told St. Martin has less Dominicans in St. Martin. We have more people in Guadeloupe. But let us look a fire in the place, man. You're dead, man. I want to go back to St. Martin, man. The Dominica Labour Party runs things in Dominica and Guadeloupe and St. Martin, my dear friends. That is labor love. We are dead. We have life. No. We are, I have to stop right now. Interest of time. But those of you from Maho, I shall continue to fight for you, the people of the Maho constituency, my dear friends. And that is why you must come down to vote for Ray Blackmore and the Dominica Labour Party. Labour? Labour! 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 Thank you, my friends. One love, one love. You know, if you're happy and you know it, make some noise. If you're happy and you know it, make some noise. If you're happy and you know it, and you vote in Labour Party, if you're happy and you know it, somebody make some noise! Labour! Yes! Yes, 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 yes. We're bringing to you another powerful speaker. We're bringing to you, brothers and sisters, the parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth constituency, the Honorable Ian Douglas. Labour! 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 Guadeloupe Labour! Dominique Labour! Yes, 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 that's better. Good evening, Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt and Mrs. Skerritt. All the other members of cabinet here with us and the other candidates in the upcoming general elections. And you, the Dominicans living in Guadeloupe, I want to say, Good night to you, and it is a pleasure to be here addressing you tonight. Brothers and sisters, we are on the road to victory. I said the Dominica Labour Party is on the road to victory. And we want you 
the Dominicans who live in Guadeloupe to know that you are very much a part of that victory, brothers and sisters. You are a part of Dominica. You are Dominicans. And you have a right to enjoy all that Dominica has to offer, brothers and sisters. We feel a part of you. That is why we are here tonight. To share the joy of the impending victory that we are about to achieve at the polls. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you that there is nothing stopping the Dominican Labour Party and Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt from a resounding victory at the polls when the next general election is called, brothers and sisters. We have taken Dominica from one crisis to the next. Ever since we became the government of the Commonwealth of Dominica, brothers and sisters, it has been one challenge after another. Eight months into the 2000, after the 2000 general elections, in our first term, we lost a prime minister. Hardly two years later, brothers and sisters, we lost another prime minister. People thought we were done and out. They said we finish, but we finish. And lo and behold, the best was yet to come, brothers and sisters. And we got the best prime minister that Dominica has ever seen in its history. Doctor, the honorable. Brothers and sisters. It has been one natural disaster after another, brothers and sisters. We had the Christmas trough that decalay Dominica, brothers and sisters. We had not even recovered from that yet, brothers and sisters. We had another natural disaster, Tropical Storm Erica, that quasi, brothers and sisters, the communities of Bellevue, Chopin, and Pidi Savan, brothers and sisters. But if you see what we have been able to build back for the people of Petit Savan in Belvish Opera, brothers and sisters, it is world class. The housing that we have been able to build that you have seen on the screen, all you have city here in Guadeloupe, you know. Well, we building city in Dominica too. Labor! 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 And the thing about those city that Dr. Roosevelt Skerritt is building, nobody haven't got to pay a black cent for their city in Dominica. Labor! Labor! Brothers and sisters, that is a government with a vision. That is a government with a purpose. That is a government of direction, brothers and sisters. Up to now, the campaign started since January. Since January, we launching candidate after candidate. Candidate after candidate. Winning candidates, brothers and sisters. People who are not looking for a job. People who are not coming to government to get a job. These are people who, who have sacrificed their life for their community. And they're giving up everything to come and serve again in this government under the caring direction and leadership of the best prime minister in the Western Hemisphere. That is the slate of candidates that we are offering you in this election, brothers and sisters. We are building homes for persons, brothers and sisters, who couldn't before afford their own homes. We are building a brand new hospital. And the first phase of that hospital is already complete, brothers and sisters. We are happy for the medical care that Guadeloupe and Matnik provided to us in the past. But in the future, Guadeloupe and Matnik have to come to Dominica to get international medical care in Dominica, brothers and sisters. That is what we're doing in Dominica. And the only party that could do that for Dominica is Roosevelt Skerritt and the Dominica Labour. Labour! Labour! 
brothers and sisters, every single school in Dominica today is free of charge. From preschool to primary school. From primary school to secondary school. From secondary school to college is free of charge. Mothers haven't got to pay a cent for their children to go to school. And any child in Dominica today who wants to go to university, university overseas is free of charge. Government paying it. Brothers and sisters, the only party that can do that for the people of Dominica is the Dominica Labour Party. Imagine you 70 years and you didn't work for government in your life. But you worked for your community. You had a bakery making bread. You was a fisherman fishing. You had a truck driving people to Roseau, brothers and sisters. The government is paying you a pension, brothers and sisters. Every month, people over 70 in Dominica, their money coming and meet them in the bank. That is because of the Dominica Labour Party, brothers and sisters. Everybody, everybody right now in Dominica, over 60 years, can walk into any medical facility in Dominica today and get medical attention free of charge, brothers and sisters. That is what we are doing for the people of Dominica. And I can tell you, as God is my witness, and remember the dates I told you this in Guadeloupe here on this platform. By the time the next election comes around, when you want to come to Dominica, you will be flying into the Dominica International Airport. Labor! Labor! And if you don't take the plane, but you take the boat, you take the ferry, you will be sailing into the brand new Dominica Ferry Terminal, brothers and sisters. Labor! Labor! That is what your party is doing for you. And we want you to know that you are a part of that. You can come home to vote once your name is on the register. You can come to Dominica to put your cross for your party of your choice. And that party is the Dominica Labour Party, brothers and sisters. So we are on the road to victory. We are on the road to victory. And I want you to come down to see those world-class five-star hotels that are open in Dominica today. Sam Rafael and Jungle Bay. You remember I told you that a tropical storm, Erica, had devastated the east of Dominica. Pitit Savan and Point Milat. That is where Jungle Bay was. And the Prime Minister went to Sam Rafael and he said, I will help you to build back Jungle Bay. And today, a brand new Jungle Bay five-star hotel is opened in Soufrière in Dominica thanks to the Dominica Labour Party. Labour! Labour! And if you come down to Dominica now and you come to Portsmouth and you go to Bellol in Tatan, you will see another brand new five-star hotel built by the Dominica Labour Party, brothers and sisters. Creating employment. So all of you here in Guadeloupe, in the hotel industry, in the tourism industry, who want to come back home to work, we have work for you to do. We have work for you to do. Come and share your experiences. Come and share your experiences, brothers and sisters. Dominica is fast becoming one of the best countries in the Eastern Caribbean because of the Dominica Labour Party. So I want to tell you before I leave, don't believe in the rumors that you are hearing. Don't believe in the lies that they are telling. Don't believe in the falseness 
that they are spreading, brothers and sisters. Continue to believe in the Dominica Labour Party. Continue to believe and support Dr. The Honorable Roosevelt Scary, brothers and sisters. Because like Dennis Charles told you, when you in good house, bad house does call you. When you in good house, so don't make no bad house call you. Make your decision. Make your election sure. Come down and vote for the Dominica Labour Party. I thank you very much. The hotel's coming. Hospital coming. Even airport coming. So Labour we voting. The hotel's coming. Hospital's coming. Even airport coming. So Labour we voting. Boom. I put up. I put up. I put up. to my auntie, my sister. Even the hotel. I put up. I put up. I realize something, my dear friends. All of us. All of us who are running for elections, we have with us Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt running with us in every constituency. And that is why I know that Labour will be successful and that we will build Dominica together because we have a strong man with us all over the country building Dominica. So you do not have to be afraid. You know, all of us in Granville, this is Jean-Gobert. Ukaini Ed Kopal Rep, Eva Ukaini Prime Minister Skerit Kopal Rep, or Sia Gwabe, because I'll serve Gwabe or Blige Avasi. And all over the country, this is what is going to happen. Absolutely. Yes, we have him in Vegas too. And we will help him in Vegas too. We will help him all over the country. That is why all over Dominica, we will be building, we will be building a powerful country, a country that will be the best country in Dominica. We have two more speakers to go. We have two more speakers to go. Two more speakers to go, brothers and sisters. One of them is the parliamentary representative for the cottage constituency. Welcome, brother Reggie. Reggie Austrian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me say to you, it is a pleasure to be here in Gentlemen, and I want to start by thanking for having looked after me when I was at the hospital in 2015 and 2016. I have never seen a greater outpouring of love by the Dominican people, ladies and gentlemen. And you know what the workers said? They said I was going to die. They said I had all kinds of sickness. My heart was full of water. They cut my two foot. What they didn't realize that I would be around for this election to light fire on them. Ladies and gentlemen. Because we cannot afford to have those boys back in power to run this country of ours. And it's interesting that this election has been held on the eve of our 41st anniversary of independence. And it's a time when we should stop, reflect, see where we came from, see where we are now, and decide where we want to go with this country, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say to you that everybody has said to you that once your name on the list, you can come back to vote, and that is true. What they didn't tell you, had it not been for Roosevelt Skerritt and the Dominican Party, your name would have been removed from the voters list and you would not be allowed to vote. Because the United Workers Party was bent on removing your names from the voters list because they know when you come to vote, you come to vote for the Dominican Labour Party. They have us in court. They try to burn down the country. And even when we was going to pass legislation in the parliament, they had stones in front of the Wasco waiting to stun the parliament. And your prime minister had to shut down the parliament during the daylight. They tried to stop you from voting. And it was Rosie Douglas who said that the people in the diaspora, they're making a great contribution to our development. As little as it is, you send back what you have. And I can never forget the contribution that you made during the passage of Hurricane Maria 
When you put your little codfish together, your little rice together, and send them to feed your people in Dominica. And so you have a right to decide who forms in a government and who should lead you into the next election. I want to say to you that they're making you believe that this United Workers Party is different from the one of Edison James. But it's the same United Workers Party. The same policies they have. The same principles they have, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you where they left this country when they left. I only have 10 minutes, so I can't be long. So I'm going to race through it. When we got into government, we met 53 million, in 2000 I'm talking about, 53 million dollars worth of unpaid checks at the treasury. The country was broke. They couldn't pay their bills. They couldn't pay their checks, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we met $9 million worth of LPOs that were unprocessed. Credit they took from the private sector. They couldn't pay the private sector. We met $9 million there. Ladies and gentlemen, we met a debt to Social Security. When you work, they take out your little money to put aside for when you retire. In four and a half years, the United Workers Party had only made one payment to Social Security. And there was a debt to Social Security of $33 million. That is your money they stole from your parents, your teachers, your policemen, your nurses. They never paid it. That is what we met. Ladies and gentlemen, we also met a debt of $14 million. That is pensioners money. People who had worked in the country, they retired. They want their little money to send for their children overseas to pay their mortgage. The United Workers Party could not pay pensioners their little retirement money. Ladies and gentlemen, on top of that, we met a debt. Oh, they took a loan of $140 million in Trinidad at 14%. They say to build an international airport. They use that money to pay salaries in October, November, and December of uh, 1999. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just showing you how the United Workers Party left this economy. And there is much more. But when I do the maths, I found out that they will, we met Roosevelt, Scary, Pierre Charles, Rosie Douglas. They met a debt, local debt, of three hundred and six million dollars that this Labour Party government had to pay, ladies and gentlemen. And internationally, we met a debt of two hundred and ninety-two million. It means that when this government came into office, we met a debt of over six hundred million dollars that we had to pay. Rosie Douglas died. Petras died trying to pay the bill. And here comes this little boy from Vekas, ladies and gentlemen. And many of us here said that Scary could not do the job. Many of us said that Scary could not do it. But within three years, Scary was supposed to steady the ship of Dominica. That is why we are here today to celebrate with you. And we don't come here to raise funds, you know. We don't come here to take from you. The little money that you make in here in Guadeloupe or St. Martin or America. We don't come here with no box to pass. No blue box, no red box, ladies and gentlemen. We come to bring to you the good news of the salvation of this country under the leadership of Roosevelt Scarlet. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, can you tell me one thing you have heard the United Workers Party say they will do when they get into power? Ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard them talk about the housing program? Have you ever heard them talk about the hospital? Have you heard them talk about the new hotels being built? Well, they cannot talk about it because they oppose all of it, ladies and gentlemen. I remember when we went to the parliament to get 15 acres of land in Cabritz for the construction of the Kempinski Hotel. They voted against it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me say to you that if they're not going to be honest with you, 
If they're not going to be truthful with you, then you have a right not to vote for them because you're voting for honesty, integrity, and commitment to your country. Did they tell you that two months after the hurricane, Roosevelt Scarry paid $18 million to the farmers and the fishermen? Did they tell you that right now as we speak, we have $65 million from the World Bank to revive the agricultural sector? Did they ever tell you that just two weeks ago, the Japanese government signed an agreement of $27 million to fix the Rosa and Marigold Fisheries Complex? Well, let me tell you what they tell you. They tell you they're going to build an international airport. And when you ask them where the money coming from, they say Scarit will make the money and they will spend it, ladies and gentlemen. That is what they tell you. Because Scarit is a tipwayo. Scarit is a slave, yo. Scarit is a servant, yo. a sacrifice, Ladies and gentlemen, damn lazy men waiting. But I can say to you that the money Scarit making it's not easy money. It's hard work to make that money. Scary have to spend hours and hours in the air flying from country. And we don't sell passports in Dominica. We don't sell passports. We give, we have a citizen by investment program. You have to agree to invest in a project in this country. And when you invest in that project, you will apply for a passport like anybody else. You will apply for a passport and then you can get a passport. But you know, the same passport they don't want us to sell, they have it lined up to give it to one company who have total right on the sale of a Dominican passport. And I'll tell you what, they have a problem. Because in 2005, the same gentleman gave them $6 million for their campaign. On the promise that if they win, they will give them our passport to control. They lose. In 2009, those same men came back looking for their money. In 2014, those men come back to look for their money. No money because workers cannot win. And then he say they have planned to assassinate him. Well, my brother, if you have the people money and you cannot pay the people back their money, then take what you get, ladies and gentlemen. But you know, they're Dominicans too.